It's a privilege and honor to have with us today Kelly Ward Dio. She is currently serving as the state senator for Arizona and as the president of the Arizona Osteopathic Medical Association and is the past president of the Arizona Society of the American College of Osteopathic Family Physicians. She graduated from WVSOM in 1996. Upon her graduation from WVSOM, Dr. Ward completed her residency in family medicine at Garden City Osteopathic Hospital in Garden City, Michigan. She was named Young Family Physician of the Year in 2008 by the ACOFP and Physician of the Year in 2007 by the Arizona Osteopathic Medical Association. Kelly and her husband, Michael, have three children, Nick, Katie, and Cameron. Kelly's mom, Lorraine Bird, DO, is also an alum of the school. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming our keynote speaker, Kelly Ward, DO. Well, you saw everybody else had papers. I've got an iPad, so you can see what, that as the generations change, we do things a little bit differently. Let me get this thing set up. And I just want to say thank you so, so much to WVSOM for inviting me. It's such an honor to be here, uh, back here at my alma mater. And many of the people that you see up here uh, in the faculty on the DS over here were the same faculty that I had that made me into the um, osteopathic physician that I am today. So um, I'm, I'm thankful to them, and you all will be too. All right. So, I wanted to just tell you, it's been a whirlwind few days for me. Um, I want to thank my husband, Mike, and our son, Cameron, and our son for the year, Eduardo, for being here with me. Eduardo's our exchange student. Um, it's kind of been a bittersweet couple of days because our daughter, Katie, left yesterday for a year in Chile as an exchange student. Um, but knowing that we've given her a great foundation makes celebrating her amazing adventure a little bit easier. But it's still difficult when your first child leaves home, I can tell you that. It was a tearful day. But speaking of a good foundation, you're going to get a great foundation in medical, osteopathic medical education here at WVSOM. What I want to talk to you about is the rest of your life, your real life, so to speak. Now, there are many things to think about. You're entering into a time-intensive, frustrating, thrilling, unimaginable period of time in your life. You have to ask yourself, what are your priorities? When I was in medical school, I had many mentors. Many of them are here. <laughs> now, this one in particular wasn't. Surgery wasn't really my forte, but I remember one of my preceptors in particular who loved to brag that he was the busiest surgeon in town. Well, I have to tell you, I think that's one of the dumbest things I ever heard. <laughs> if uh, you're measuring your success only in comparison to the success of the person next to you, then you've already failed. How will you measure your life? How will you measure your career? How will you measure your relationships? These are the real questions to think about as you're setting your priorities. Now, I don't claim to be an expert. I haven't been in practice for 20 years. We haven't finished raising our kids yet. I do speak with you, to you with some personal experience, but I want to tell you about some things that I'm trying to apply in my own life, things that I'm not perfect at, but I'm really trying to take them seriously. I'm going to present to you four principles that I think are essential to having a fulfilling and quality career in osteopathic medicine while you balance your life. First, surround yourself with quality people. Now, when I was in school, I knew I wanted to be the kind of doctor that was a real person, not a kind of doctor that put herself on a pedestal and kind of acted like a big jerk. Um, I think that's a pretty solid goal, right? So believe me, you can lose a bit of your humanity when you're in medical training. Some people develop some jerky tendencies, and that's okay, but the, the secret is to realize that you're developing them and get rid of them if they do pop up. You can do this by surrounding yourself with positive people and positive influences. Everybody needs professional friends and mentors. When we moved to Arizona, we had one goal in mind, 
a great place to live and raise our family while we practiced medicine. For us, it was about family. My husband, Mike, is an amazing emergency physician. We were able to convince my mom, Dr. Bird, who's a pediatrician, to relocate from Tennessee to Arizona when we did. The three of us were able to infuse little Lake Havasu City, Arizona with a breath of fresh medical energy, start bringing medical education to rural Arizona, and get to be actively involved in the community in which we lived. Having my mom and my husband as resources and mentors, not to mention as cheerleaders, is amazing. Knowing there are people who always have my back is reassuring. Building relationships with other doctors, teachers, business professionals, etc., weaves you into your community. You're not an island. You are somebody who can make a difference where you live. This is one of the reasons why we got into politics. Now, I say we because my running for office was a family affair. Without a supportive family, who's the backbone of my team, and the reason why long hours, frustrating floor sessions, arguments with opponents, and fending off attacks by bullies on social media um, are worth it, I could have never, I could have never, and I, I would have never um, become a state senator. I would have never even tried. The same rules apply for doctors and for statesmen. Stay away from the naysayers and the negative people. Stay away. Think long and hard about the positive influences around you when you pick your job. Think long and hard about who you select as mentors. The surgeon I told you about earlier, the one who could only tell me how busy he was in comparison to the other people in town, not really a good mentor or a role model. Politicians who say one thing and do another, I also think they're people to avoid. Now, next, think about this. You can't plant the saplings when you need the shade now. Great companies plan for success in 5, 10, and 20 years. Apple just recently came out with the iPhone 5, but they already have people planning for iPhone 7, iPhone 8, iPhone 12. Um, our relationships and our families are no different. If we want great families in the future, we have to invest the necessary energy and the resources for them today. All of us have a vision of what we want our lives and our families to be like in 20 years. There's a lot of work that goes into that today. Remember this, invest in life. Investment in life cannot be sequenced. You might think that you could compartmentalize the order of your life, but there's never gonna be the perfect time. Uh, down, you know, down the road, you might say, I could work more in the early years of when my kid's young and it isn't that critical, and then when my kids are older and we have more in common, we have more interests in common, I'll spend more time with them then. Relationships aren't built overnight. It takes time and it takes investment. Some people think, I'm gonna work really hard so that my wife and I can retire in luxury. But then when retirement time comes, you find out that the relationship that you wanted hasn't been built. And guess what? Doctors are the worst in the world at this. <laughs> so I remember thinking myself, when I, when I finish residency, I'm gonna start my real life. Now, uh, even though our daughter was born at the end of my fourth year of medical school, and our son was born uh, during the second year of my residency, because I was still in my training, I didn't feel like I was in real life. Many doctors fall into the trap of saying, when I'm done with residence, I'll play with the kids more, or when my practice is established, my husband and I will have a regular date night. Or even, when I become a partner in my group, then I can start focusing on my family. The day when you are not busy will never come. Remember this, the day will never come when you're not busy. Start learning how to incorporate important things during medical school. Of course, you're gonna have some late night studying and time away from your family and friends, but remember, they're the constants in your life and they need to be nurtured. A doctor can easily neglect the first few years of, of marriage or the first few years of a child's life. The loved ones become accustomed to our being gone and the relationships can never develop into what they should have. Or worst case scenario, the relationships can never recover. We like, uh, you know, we thrive under pressure. We like proving that we can do what we can do when the chips are down. We expect the people closest to us to understand that because it's the life we've chosen and it's so important to us. But we have to be responsible too. Remember, meager time investment into family yields meager investment returns. You can't reap investment returns that were never made. Remember that. All right, so now how many of you have already missed a friend's wedding or an exotic vacation with your college buddies? Um, if you haven't, 
get ready for it. <laughs> With our careers, we lose certain privileges. Now, we get to be doctors, and we have the greatest job on earth. People trust us with their lives. We get to solve puzzles every single day, and we're able to help those in uh, times of their greatest need. There's an intrinsic good to what we do, and there's an excitement of helping others. There's also a reason why, you know, there's a reason why there's so many medical dramas on TV. We have cool jobs. But if we want to have success in our families and our personal lives, we've lost certain privileges. I know now that when I signed up as a doctor, I lost the privilege of ever feeling fully rested. This also goes with being in politics, never fully rested. It's done. Not going to happen. If I want to have a quality family life, I've lost the privilege of being cranky when I get home from work. You know, our jobs are demanding, time intensive, and emotionally draining. In this audience, I know there are future ER doctors who deal with stressful endorphin releasing situations every shift. There's future oncologists who deal with people on the edge of death every day. There are future family doctors and internal internists who are going to spend a lot of their days trying to get patients to do things that they really do not want to do. They don't want to take care of themselves, but you're going to try every day to try to do it. Believe me, our jobs are hard. However, when you leave work, you've lost the privilege of doing certain things that others do if you want to have a successful out-of-work life. You've lost the privilege of letting a bad day at work affect the smile on your face when you get home. If every time I had something bad that happened at work or happened in the state senate affect me when I came home, and I came home frustrated, angry, sad, my kids would have to cut, they'd, they'd come to know me as just an ogre that they needed to be afraid of. Your time is limited with your spouse, your kids, your family, and your loved ones. You have to learn to suck it up. I've also lost the privilege of hobbies that take up a lot of time. Now, when we moved to Arizona, uh, you know, it seemed like it would be a natural to learn how to play golf. Doctors play golf, right? And I think politicians play golf, too. So Mike and I even went out and hit some houses. I mean, hit some golf balls uh, <laughs> a few times. Now, golf is something that takes a lot of time if you want to be good at it. And it takes a lot of time even to play nine holes of golf. But we just didn't feel like that after we had worked a whole day of work, 12-hour 12, 12 shifts for him, and then 24 hours a day, seven days a week for me, taking calls, returning phone calls, uh, doing hospital admissions, taking care of patients in the nursing home, that it was fair to our kids to leave them for three or five, four hours to hit some golf balls. So we don't have a Wednesday afternoon or a Saturday morning tea time, but we have a great relationship with our kids. There's other things that we've had to miss and we've had to prioritize to find the right balance. Now, don't get me wrong, you're going to have interests outside medicine, but if you expect to excel at them at the level of your friends outside medicine, how, how they're able to excel, you're likely to damage, do severe damage to the relationships that matter the most. Okay, who remembers Dell Computers? In, in the 90s, they had a great business model. They built an affordable computer with great customer service. They started to look for ways to cut costs, and uh, they started to use a Taiwan-based company called Asus. They could get their circuit boards from Asus for 20% less. They could get the motherboards. They could cut their costs by 20% more. Pretty soon, Dell started having Asus build the whole computer and even design the computer and uh, manage their supply chain. So everything except for the brand name was outsourced. What happened? In 2005, Asus created its own brand of computer. Today, Dell's market share is nowhere near what it was in 2005. The lesson, never outsource the future. Now, it's easy for doctors to want to outsource, and I confess, I do outsource the cleaning at our house. Thank goodness for Debbie. <laughs> uh, but we can get to the point where we outsource other things. We outsource reading to our kids to an iPad. We outsource playing with our kids to local soccer coaches, gymnastics teachers, and swimming instructors. We outsource helping our kids with homework to tutors. We outsource quality time with our spouse to a movie theater. We even outsource our friends and our social interactions to Facebook and Twitter, letting our relationships deteriorate to nothing more than meaningless stat status updates and forwarding funny anecdotes. And it's easy to justify, justify, you know, because, hey, we're doctors. We're busy. But we can't outsource our most precious assets. We can't outsource the things that make our relationships with family and loved ones important. You're in osteopathic medical school. You're going to be learning hands-on medicine. Don't take a hands-off approach to your real life. Now, I don't think I was asked to speak to you just because I am a WVSOM graduate, 
who's done pretty well at balancing my career and my real life. Part of the reason I came up here, or I'm up here today, is because I've always been a person who wants to be part of making things happen rather than waiting for them to happen to me. As an osteopathic medical student, I was involved with almost every student group on campus. You can tell, yeah, some of the people here can tell you. But my passion was the Student Osteopathic Medical Association, or SOMA, where I worked my way up through the ranks to ultimately serve as the national president. Now, um, I do want to say, because I saw Chris, Chris Hawk, Hawkins market, Markham, who uh, was one of my, my very best friends in medical school, so it's awesome to see her in the audience, too. And she was part of my SOMA Gold Dust Twins, with the two of us. Now, and also, if it weren't for National SOMA, my husband Mike and I wouldn't have met, because he's a Kirksville grad and I'm a WVSOM grad. So throughout my prof professional career, I continued to strive to learn about issues affecting our profession, preferring to shape the decisions rather than complain about what happened to me later down the road. I have been active in the osteopathic medical politics since I was a student, culminating in my time as president of the Arizona Osteopathic Medical Association. Ultimately, things in our country got to a point where I wondered why wasn't somebody doing something until I realized that I could be one of the people who actually did something. I was blessed by God with skills, talents, and abilities that I could share with more than just my family or my patients I could use what I'd been given for the greater good. Every one of us here has talents and abilities as physicians, as spouses, as parents, as friends, and even as people involved in politics. So don't sit back and let things pass you by. Invest in what's important, be a voice for your profession and for your community. So let's wrap it up. I know you're, you're waiting for those words. I want you to remember four things. One, surround yourself with quality people. Two, investment in life cannot be sequenced. Three, you lose certain privileges when you become a doctor, so suck it up. And four, don't up outsource the most important things in your life. As I measure my career, I realize there will always be somebody who's busier. There will always be somebody who makes more money than I do. There will always be someone who's more adored by his or her patients than I am. There's always going to be somebody smarter than me. But that's not how I measure my life. I'm surrounded by quality people that make me a better person. I'm trying to dedicate my time away from work to the important matters of my life, my kids, my husband, my faith, and my state and my country. I'm completely content knowing that I'll never be a great golfer, a professional photographer, or a marathon runner. And I can make sure that I never outsource my most valued assets, my relationship with my husband, the rearing of our kids, and the fate of my community, my state, and my country. So congratulations, and get ready for the ride of your life. Thanks for having me.